Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show brought to you by Datastax Academy, where we bring you the latest news and interview technical experts to help you succeed in building large scale distributed systems. Hey, it's Jeff Carpenter. I'm hanging out with Caroline George in New York City, as if you couldn't tell. Uh, so Caroline, you live here in the city, that's yes. right. Uh, and you work for Datastax? Yep, a little and, bit four years. Yeah, okay, a little bit longer than me, but who's counting, really? Um, okay, so four years of experience. What have you been doing with Datastax for these past four years? Or even before that, like back up a little What's bit. What's background? your background, yeah. Um, so my background is actually a mix of technology and finance. Um, oh, okay. I started as a developer, did Java, web, iOS development before, um, and I worked at Citigroup in technology, which made me want to learn more about finance. So I did an MBA, worked on a trading floor before realizing actually like tech better. So then I went back to technology and now I'm, da I'm at Datastax as a mm. solutions engineer. Nice, so you came full circle, came yes. back to the tech world. Okay, so you've been working for Datastax, you said four years, mm -hmm. um, and what have you been doing since you've been here? Uh, so I'm a solutions engineer. Okay. Um, so I meet with customers or prospects. I, you know, they tell me about what they're trying to do, what's not working. Uh, I explain our technology, figure out if it's a good fit, and then if it's a good fit, help them, you know, do a little bit of evangelism, education, help them implement it, and then uh, hopefully they become customers. So you're a problem solver, essentially. Uh, but you don't you don't tell everyone to use DataStax Enterprise apparently all the time. Yeah, I mean there's definitely you know the right fit, the good use case for DSE, and if it's not the right fit, not the right use case, we'll I mean we'll be completely candid about it. There's no point in you know hitting your head on the wall trying to get something to fit when it's right. not the right. Right, exactly. Okay, so you shared a few stories with us today. Um, we're in New York City today because we've just been doing a developer day here in New York City. Um, so this is a developer-focused event. It's an awareness event. Come and get your hands on with the te te technology kind of event. Um, and then hopefully, you know, go to DataStax Academy to learn more. And we've seen a lot of people here who are beginners with Cassandra and with DataStax Enterprise today. And you were sharing a few things about different use cases that you've experienced over time. One thing that uh, you, the one thread that you kind of pulled on that I thought was really interesting that I wanted to bring you on the show and talk about uh, is this idea how the conversation that you have with customers, there's, there's some themes that kind of come up again and again. And you were sharing how like three of those themes and how there's been kind of a trend and a progression over time in the conversations that you're having with customers. So you remember talking about this, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, why don't you start? Like, what, what were the sorts of conversations that you were having with customers at first when you kind of first started this this world of data stacks and talking with people about Cassandra? Yeah. So, I joined data stacks a little over four years ago. Uh, in the beginning, it was a lot of conversation about existing systems that could not handle the workload. So, a lot of traditional RDBMS, a lot of Oracle, where the data volume was just too much, and so you know. The easy approach is then to throw more hardware at the problem, but at some point you've maxed it out. Um, then people are kind of thinking about splitting their data across multiple servers, but that's actually really hard to, to do, to implement, to maintain, and then that's right. if the master goes down before it replicates the data, then you risk losing your data. So this is where people started looking at Apache Cassandra and DataStax Enterprise, because it comes with built-in replication. So you can do active anywhere, multi-DC, replication of three per data center. So if a data center goes down, you still have your data available. Uh, if a server, like it doesn't have to go down, it could just be down for maintenance or you're applying a patch, so it's a scheduled maintenance, and your data is still available. And that's just built in, right, yeah. okay. So, so those problems that you were um, hearing about specifically at first were scale problems. Well, it was, Availability. Availability uh, and scale, uh, or? So at first, it's, yeah, it's availability. What was more? <laughs> well, it's kind of two. Um, one is availability. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a client-facing application, let's say the login page of your website. If people can't log in, they can't check their account, they can't buy your product, uh, you need that to be available all the time. Uh, and then on the other side is what we've been hearing a lot lately, or I guess the last two years, is about microservices. 
So microservices, it all comes down to agile development, being able to iterate faster, do production releases every two weeks or so. And if yeah. you have a yeah. large monolithic system like DB2 mainframe, it's really hard to be agile with a mainframe. And so this is where Apache Cassandra and DataStacks Enterprise comes in because it's a scalable technology. So as you bring in you know, new services, new features, new, more data, you can add nodes. So you know, doubling the, the size of your cluster, you double the amount of throughput as much uh, as well as the amount of data volume you can handle. Okay, so it sounds like the conversation started to change over time. At first, you were having these conversations with people about, oh, how, you know, I can't fit my database on a single server anymore. I can't, you know, keep buying a bigger and bigger box. Um, so I, I need to scale out my my database to multiple nodes. And that sounds like that was conversation one. Mm -hmm. um, people started talking about microservices because what scaling out the application tier as well, or what yeah. do you think drove that um, change in the tone of the conversation? Well, people moved to. I guess it's going back to just the general architecture yeah. of their system. So going from one large machine, one large database, mainframe, to you know, web services, REST API, what, uh, all that microservice architecture. Right, right, okay. And so it, by isolating each process, you know, it gives you also more flexibility, and then having a scalable database actually aligns really well with that kind of architecture. Is it, uh, is it easier to talk about using Cassandra if you have a microservices architecture? Is that like an easier insertion point or? Uh, not as much. Uh, to be fair, I mean, you don't have to be, in a, you don't have to have a microservice architecture to fit, you know, to be a good fit for Cassandra. Right. Uh, you could even, you know, sometimes let's say you're, you're a telecom company and you do, you have iPhone launches every, I don't know how many, like twice a year now probably. Right. Uh, you know your, um, the volume of, the, you know, of, of your website usage is going to double or it's going to peak. And so you need to plan for uh, high usage. So you need a scalable system where you can actually handle that kind of throughput. Okay, makes sense. Um, so, okay. Started out with just, I'm going to replace my old uh, large database server, and then it was, I need to break my monolith up into microservices, and then you were I, saying that you've, you've encountered a new trend in some of your conversations more recently. It's kind of like that next stage of the architectural maturation in the cloud. Like, so what is that third stage? Yeah, and so lately it's been, well, you know, now I have a ton of data, what do I do with it? Uh, right. So <laughs> lately it's been all about insights. It's all about machine learning and AI. It's about don't just show me what, you know, my transactions, uh, tell me what it means to me. Um, don't, you know, yeah, I know I did these purchases with my credit card, but, you know, show me a trend of what am I spending my money on. If I'm trying to save, help me save. Um, right. Same thing, it's kind of like that, even a recommendation engine, right? I don't show me what I just looked at, but show me what's complementary to it. So if I'm shopping for, let's say, a new dress, don't show me the same dress again. Show me maybe the shoes or the bag that goes with it. Okay, right. That makes total sense. Um, not that I shop online. For dresses. Well, nearly <laughs> as much as uh, other members of my household, let's say. But uh, I, I totally get it. I totally relate. Uh, so. Okay, so if I am now um, in this world of kind of machine learning and recommendations, what is it about Cassandra that still makes that a technology that's good to have in your underlying data layer that helps you to build that out? Yeah, so one, it's, it's flex like, because it's scalable, it's flexible. So as you bring in new data sources, you can add more nodes to be able to handle the data volume. Right. Uh, especially with DataStacks Enterprise, we also integrated Apache Spark. So you can have, let's say, Kafka as a message queue, and then you can use Spark Streaming to, let's say, enrich your data before you save into the database, or do aggregation before you save into the database, or then use the analytics, you know, uh, MLlib to then do machine learning algorithms on your data. And then in DSE, we also integrated Apache Spark, uh, Apache Solar, so you can do advanced search capabilities. So now that you have okay. all this data, it's an easy way of searching through it and filtering. Got it, okay, so there's a lot of complementary technologies that are kind of in this big data space, fast yes. data space that are, are being combined together. So yeah. is, that a, is that a combination that you're seeing a lot, kind of like that um, Kafka along with 
uh, you know, ingest data into Cassandra and then processing the Spark. I mean, do you see that? Well, you mentioned the Spark streaming in there too. Forgot that, but. Yeah, yeah. No, so yeah, we see different ways of loading data into, into DSC. I mean, one way is we see a lot of message queues. So uh, it's mostly okay. Kafka, I got to say on this one. Right. Uh, so, you know, Kafka into Spark streaming, into DSC. Uh, but then again, you know, CQL is probably the fastest way of loading data. So if you have really fast real-time ingestion, then you can just do execute async and just load your data that way. Okay. Nice. So uh, where do you see things going? Do you have any, any predictions? Um, kind of what are, what are the conversations that you're anticipating you're going to be having next with uh, customers that you talk with? So I think it's going to go, we're going to expand on that insights of data. So now that you have your data, you know, how do you use it? How do you get the value out of your data? So more machine learning, um, more, it's also a great graph use case. Uh, because when you're trying uh, to match, yes. okay. yeah, when you have multiple data sources and you have different set data sets from those data sources, how do you link them together? How do you know that, hey, this is my ATM card, this is my credit card, this is me calling the customer service number, and then all of this represents this, the one person. Right. So it's a great fit for entity resolution. Oh, okay, good, yeah, and we've had a couple episodes where we talked about that in the past. You can check out some of the back catalog uh, yes. for, for some of those. We had one with Denise uh, Gosnell and Jonathan Lacefield, I think. So good content, uh, well worth going back and taking a look at. Thanks, Caroline, for joining us. We really appreciate it and for giving a keynote today. And actually, we're going to take some of that footage that we got today, and we're going to put that up and make that available on Data Stacks Academy YouTube as well. So look for that and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss an episode of the content that we have for you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us again for the Distributed Data Show. We love your feedback, so go to the Distributed Data Show page on Data Stacks Academy and tell us what you think. You can also find us on the Data Stacks Academy YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get great podcasts. While you're there, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.